Check out this etching of the Roman army. You can see a lot of things in this etching, but look at what's on the standard. SPQR. In fact, if you go to Rome today, you can see SPQR on manhold covers, you can see it on buildings, you can see it on plaques, uh, you can see it on the floor. You see it everywhere. SPQR. But what does SPQR stand for? Well, it's an acronym for the Latin phrase Senatus Populusque Romanus which in English translates to the Senate and people of Rome. And it refers to the Roman form of government, which was a republic. And that's what we're talking about today on World Studies. Hello, everybody. Today, we're talking about the Roman form of government. Now, the city of Rome was founded in 753 BC. So if you're doing the math, We've got 2012 years on your domini. We've got 753 BC. That means Rome was founded 2,765 years ago, which is a really long time. And when Rome first started, it was a monarchy. Now we remember back to before, a monarchy is a type of government where you've got one ruler. Rome had two classes of people. You had the wealthy land owners who were called patricians. The word patrician comes from the Latin word patres, which means father. So if you want to remember that fathers have the power, so did the patricians. The patricians were in charge of choosing the kings during the monarchy. The second class of people, the lower class of people, uh, these would be your shopkeepers, these would be your laborers, these would be your craftspeople. They were called plebeians. Plebeians could not serve in the government, they could not be priests, but they did have to serve in the army, which is going to be important later on. Plebeians comes from the Latin word plebs, which means many. And the reason it comes from the word that means many is they were 95% of the population. That means 95% of the people were plebeians and only 5% of the people were patricians, the people that had the power. Now, if you remember back to our last video, the last three kings in Rome were Etruscans, and the patricians eventually grew resentful of this fact and overthrew the monarchy. And what they created in its place is called a republic. A republic is a form of government where you elect your leaders, you vote for your leaders. At first in the Roman Republic, only patricians had power, but as time went on, plebeians gained more and more power. And what would eventually happen is you'd have a government that became a tripartite. A tripartite is a government that has three separate parts. So you've got three parts. You've had the magistrates, you had the senate, and then you had the tribunes and assemblies. And we're going to talk about each of those right now. First, you had the magistrates. The magistrates were officials that were elected for a one-year term. The top two magistrates were the consuls. The consuls were in charge of running the city and running the military. There were two of them so that neither one would become too powerful. Underneath the consuls, you had other magistrates who were in charge of various things. Some of them would serve as judges. Some magistrates were in charge of dealing with finances. And still other magistrates were in charge of organizing festivals and parties. After the magistrates, let's talk about the Senate. Now, during the Roman monarchy, there was also a Senate. And the senators were in charge of advising the kings. Now, when the patricians overthrew the government, they kept the Senate in place. And at that time, there were somewhere around 300 senators. Their jobs were to advise the consuls. And eventually, they gained control of the city finances, which made them very powerful. A senator would be a senator for life. Once you were a senator, you were always a senator. So after the magistrates and senators, you've got one more branch of government, which were the assemblies and the tribunes. And their main job was to look over the rights of the common people, the plebeians. So you've got assemblies, and their main job was to elect the magistrates. And on these assemblies, there were both plebeians and patricians. Then there were the tribunes, which were a group of plebeians who were in charge of vetoing things that the other branches of government did that were unfair to the common people. Now, vetoing means to say no. So they were able to say no to, say, the consuls, or they were able to say no to the Senate. That's a lot of power they've got right there, but they kept that power to a minimum by only allowing them to be, serve as tribunes for a year. Those are the three branches of the government, and it wouldn't have worked except the Roman people had a real sense of civic duty, 
or a duty to the city. Wealthy people felt a civic duty to participate in government, uh, serving as senators or consuls, and people who could vote, and it's important to remember, not everybody in Rome could vote, but those people who could vote felt the responsibility to vote. They were also expected to participate in every single election. And you may have noticed while we were discussing the different parts of the Roman Republic, that none of the branches held all the power. And they were able to block each other. For example, there were two consuls, each one controlling half of the military. And one consul could block the actions of the other consul. You'll also remember that the tribunes could veto any other action by other branches of government. Finally, no one group was in charge of making laws. Sure, senators came up with the laws, but the magistrates had to agree to those laws. And finally, the assemblies had to ratify or accept those laws. We call this system where different branches of government have different powers and can stop the other branches of government from doing things, checks and balances. That's going to be very important for you in 8th grade American history. As plebeians gained more power, one of the big things they gained was having the laws written down. Why that's important is before you have laws written down, patricians could change them whenever they wanted for their own benefit. For a silly example, let's say I want to build a house on this plebeian's land. I'll make a law that says, hey, the land right here can only be owned by patricians. I'm not saying that is an exact example, but it kind of gets the idea across that patricians could change the laws to benefit themselves. So the plebeians, through the power of the tribunes, and eventually plebeians could become senators, the plebeians were able to get the patricians to write laws down and post them in the middle of the city. These laws were posted on 12 plaques in the middle of the city in an area what was called the Forum. The Forum was located in between two very important hills, the Palatine Hill and the Capitoline Hill. The, on the Palatine Hill is where all the wealthy people lived, all the patricians and stuff. And on the Capitoline Hill, you had a lot of important temples. The Forum itself had most of the government buildings. So you would see senators, you would see consuls intermingling with the common people. Because of this, you would see political figures getting up and giving huge orations or huge speeches to the common people. So you would have public speeches, you would have people shouting out the daily news, you would have people gossiping, you had shops that would open up. And because of all these things, it would become packed with people. Important events were held in the Forum. So the Forum would become a very important location in the city of Rome. Were you paying attention? Answer the next couple of questions to find out. What were the two social classes in ancient Rome? How were they different? The Roman Republic was a tripartite. What does this mean? Explain how it was a tripartite. Use Rome's government to explain civic duty and checks and balances. Can you think of modern examples of these two terms? Thank you.